a turning point for Thailand? Or will the military-backed elites quickly call time on reform? High turnout in Sunday's general election, delivering an unprecedented result, with uh, Pita Limja Runrat's Move Forward Party topping the populist of Phu Thai of uh, the uh, Shinawatra dynasty, the pair blowing away the United Thai National Party, the outgoing prime minister, former coup leader Prayut Chen Ocha. We'll ask why and what hopes for a coalition that still needs the approval of a Senate that's entirely appointed by the military. Will the upper chamber respect the will of the people? In a nation known for its steady diet of coups, crackdowns and turmoil, possible scenarios abound. What's clear, though, is that this election opens a new front in the traditional divide of urban elites versus rural poor. Reform for move forward includes an end to military conscription and harsh prison sentences for people who dare criticize the monarchy. Is Thailand ready to break that taboo? Today in the France 24 debate, we're wondering if Thailand is witnessing a changing of the guard. Joining us from Copenhagen, activist uh, Shini Pimlapa, spokesperson for Thai EU Dem. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me once again. With us as well, France 24 senior correspondent Cyril Payen, who, when he wore a younger man's clothes, was our <laughs> Bangkok correspondent. How you were you? younger too. I was younger too. <laughs> <laughs> That's much gray hair. Uh, with us uh, is uh, Eugénie Merieux, author of uh, Constitutional Bricolage. That's a French word. Bricolage uh, kind, of, kind of mean do it yourself handiwork. Uh, but in this case, it's Thailand's sacred monarchy versus the rule of law. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. David Camru, adjunct professor at the French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po, is here with his charts and his graphs. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you for being with us. The France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24Debate. Yeah, the world's discovering the fresh face of Thai politics. Kemi Knight has more on 42-year-old Pita Lindrum Ronrat's rocket rise in this election. A new progressive force in the landscape of Thai politics. Peter Lim Jaranrat has led his party to victory in the lower house of parliament. Now he says he's ready for the top job. People of Thailand have already spoken their wish and I, I am ready to be the prime minister for all, whether you agree with me or you disagree with me. The 42-year-old has built a large support base among young Thais, often from urban areas who are fed up with pro-military conservative leadership. He's already vowed to push ahead with a move to change the country's controversial royal defamation law, which can put people in jail for up to 15 years for anything deemed as an insult to Thailand's royal family. His other promises include promoting small businesses, curbing monopolies and ending military conscription. Move Forward has welfare policies, but Move Forward uh, is moves to the new frontier. It's no longer about populism. So actually, they have tapped into a lot of sentiments that have been feeling, I think, that Thailand needs to change. And that change has to do with the reform of the military, the monarchy, getting rid of the draft. Lim Jaranrat spent time in New Zealand as a teenager before studying in Bangkok and then at Harvard in the US. He's also a businessman and was only 25 when his father died, forcing him to return to Thailand to take over the family's struggling agriculture company. One of the younger candidates of Thailand's election, Lim Jaranrat is also popular on social media, often posting photos with his seven-year-old daughter. But in a country where military coups and court orders have often trumped the ballot box, his success in the election doesn't necessarily mean the road to prime minister will be a smooth one. He needs to gather enough votes in Parliament to make up for military-appointed Senate members. Support from the runner-up Pew Thai party is a strong start. Uh, Shini Pimbaipas, um, full disclosure, who did you vote for? Oh, of course, the winner, Move Forward Party. <laughs> uh, were you expecting this result? I think none expected this result. I was also surprised. Everyone in, th in Thailand is actually shocked. So I can say that I caught this uh, tweet from the uh, one of the polit um, uh, academic in Thailand, uh, Prajap Gongkri, he said, if this is the historic election that truly shakes Thailand and tru truly shakes all ties. It shakes all ties, a historic win, but there are hurdles ahead. Uh, we can look at the front page headline in the Bangkok, Bangkok Post uh, this Tuesday. 
uh, uh, as uh, Lim Jun Rorat tries to secure a six-way coalition. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, uh, it's 152 seats. Uh, there is a possible uh, that are going to his party. Um, uh, as you can see, Futai, the, the, the party of the Shinawats, uh, just just behind him there in that list. Uh, the regional uh, Bumja Thai party, uh, it, it could possibly uh, play kingmaker. It finished third in Sunday's elections. Uh, but Eugenie Meriot, Thailand has this uh, system under the 2017 constitution where to pick the prime minister, it's the upper house as well as the lower house, and the upper house, well, they're all appointed by the military. Yeah, just one point on pronunciation. So oh, we say please, pure, thank pure you. Thai, it means four Thais. Right? And also we use the, the first names uh, when we refer to politicians in Thailand. It's quite different uh, from other countries. Uh, in any case, yes, you're right. So who wrote the, mil the constitution? It's the military. So they created that tutelary democracy in which um, the military still has a veto power over who gets to be prime minister. So out of uh, 750 members of both houses together... Yeah, 500 plus 250. Yes, so you need a 376 uh, members in uh, the lower house if you want to defeat the military and be able to have a majority in both houses. So that's a very, very hard uh, majority to get. Puatai at started to say in the beginning of the campaign that they were aiming for that number, but in the end, um, it doesn't add up, even with Move Forward. Do, so you, were... do you share Shinny's surprise at the result? Um, well, there was strong indicators that Move Forward was in the right dynamic, and the campaign uh, started quite slowly, and then there was this huge momentum that was built little by little, and so it was to be expected that there was going to be a big win for them, but that they come first before Puyatai, I think that's the big surprise. What is it about this party and its leader, Cyril Payen? Well, it looks like the, the seeds were there for a decade or more, the seeds for a new uh, way of uh, uh, seeing democracy in this country, and the, the tree just grew, uh, but very surprisingly, very, very quick. The problem is that with the constitution, uh, 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 things we, we know in this country, uh, this tree, which is vibrant, which is an amazing tree, we, which, which came very honestly uh, uh, earlier than expected, uh, is growing under a cell because it's a constitution cell. What the, what has been designed by the, uh, I would say the the, the infection uh, into the politics by the military for the past years is going to be extremely uh, difficult. So now we have this surprise, this amazing wave of democracy which is uh, which has been uh, 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 been seen in the in the polls in the, in Thailand with a massive uh, 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 um, uh, people going to the polls but now what's going to lay ahead this is a big a big question and, uh, and I think the the prime minister I mean the um, the government could not be for before because July, before so, yeah. Thai politics we were always covering the red shirts versus the yellow shirts those who were on the side of the Shinawat dynasty supported by their base in the uh, rural hinterland versus uh, the uh, the elites uh, uh, supported by the, the military. Yeah, here comes the orange now, so the new color of democracy maybe, but a lo lot of hurdles, honestly, we know, nobody knows. And uh, when we see uh, Prime Minister Chan Ocha saying, talking again about uh, is a, he has been designed and here to make the law to to, to make uh, 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 the law uh, uh, sorry to be implemented the, the law and talking about sovereignty talking about religion monarchy uh, and people uh, it's a lot of uh, wording we can make a lot of people in Thailand still scared about the the, the next future I know that 152 seats out of 500 is not a majority by any means. Eugenie explained that mm. to us a moment ago. But David Kamaru, um, when you, what is it about this party when you see that, how is it playing, the fact that he's Instagram savvy uh, in, in those rural hinterlands that support uh, the Shinawats? Well, the, the party did double its seats virtually, the 70 more seats. Was it just the urban hipsters who voted? No, for because it, it appears that there's also support amongst the urban poor. Uh, there's a generational issue, Generation Z and the millennials have come into play. But the supporters has gone beyond, you know, Bangkok and, and the Bangkok area, it would appear, in other parts of, of Thailand. 
Um, uh, and as has just been suggested, you know, there is this enthusiasm about uh, democracy in, in Thailand. I'm old enough to have been in Thailand in 1997 when the People's Constitution was, was instituted. And there's incredible uh, enthusiasm, and, and always that enthusiasm has been frustrated when the establishment uh, with the military conducts a coup or, or destroys the hopes of the population. This time, the, 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 the defeat of the military backed parties is so crushing uh, that it would be. You know, if there is a, a, a coup attempt or even the use of the judicial courts or other means of the courts to try and overthrow this, one would expect there would be massive protests. There will be, you know, it will be a really chaotic situation. I'm not where, sure. does this, where does this enthusiasm come from? Because you had the coup that surrounded the, the period when the, the late king, uh, Bumibol, was, 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 on, was, was on the de decline. Then you had um, the crushing, effectively, in 2020 of uh, pro-democracy protests. Uh, how did this enthusiasm surge in 2023? Well, we talk about kingmakers. Uh, well, the king is a kingmaker. Um, and what is different this time around is that Bumipul Rama the Ninth is no longer there. And the present king, um, you know, has not the popularity by any means, nor the legitimacy, nor the support of the population. So, in, in a sense, this sort of patriarchal uh, sort of lid on, on, on social um, uh, desire and social um, uh, expectations has, has been lifted, democratic expectations has been lifted. Um, and so it's going to be, this is something we've got to watch very carefully. We'll, you know, what will the king do? Uh? Yes, yeah, so to go back on that question about uh, yellow shirt versus red shirts, so the move forward when it was created was aiming to bridge that gap and to go beyond, to tap into both uh, voters, the yellow shirts and the red shirts, hence the color orange. What, and sort of as a moderate party? No, and that's the really interesting interesting thing about it, is that um, in terms of image, they have this image of a modernized, uh, pro-Western type, of educa very educated um, party. So that's what appeals to the yellow shirts to some extent, and to some part of the yellow shirts, especially the urban educated yellow shirts, whereas um, they also have a very radical um, reformist, almost revolutionary, uh, platform regarding the reform of the institutions, the monarchy and the military, and that speaks to the red shirts. And what's very interesting is that if you looked at Bangkok in the past, Bangkok used to be very yellow vest, uh, yellow shirts, sorry, and that's yellow vest, that's in France, uh, <laughs> yellow shirts. And so we used to say, well, the rural poor in Thailand elects the prime minister, and then the people in Bangkok uh, overthrow them with a military coup. Now, if we look at how the vote has shifted in Bangkok, uh, so now in 2023, it's fully orange. There's only one constituency in Bangkok that is not that has not been won by the uh, move forward, but it's been won by Puyatai. Are so you suggesting Bangkok that this will make the military think twice before yes. trying something? Yes, because in the past, it's been it's really seizing Bangkok that is a coup d'état in Thailand. You need to have the ranks roll in in Bangkok and to have the people of Bangkok get out in the streets and give flowers to the military. And that's legitimacy for the coup. And you need to have protests preparing the coup, protests in Bangkok. But now, if we have a Bangkok that is fully in favor of the Move Forward Party, I think a coup in Bangkok will be very difficult to achieve. But also, the military is weakened and divided. There were two. There was the prime minister uh, Prayut running a no, party he created it was a disaster, and the deputy prime minister ran for the previous party. So the military is also divided. So that is also, in a yeah, sense. Yeah, but don't they close ranks when uh, there's trouble? Um, again, this you know, the, it's what the king may or may not say or indirectly that, that will play into this. Huh? All right, the country's outgoing prime minister, uh, uh, you were talking about Prayut, uh, on Tuesday sounding very much like a man, well, who's kind of eyeing retirement. The election has taken place, and thank you for casting your votes. I would like to congratulate all the parties that have received votes from the people. 
From now, it's a transition, information of a government. All Thais should love each other and be united for the country without conflict. Work together to develop the country to maintain, prosper and sustain the national institution for the country's development and future. Shani Pimlapas, do you take um, the uh, former coup leader there at his word that uh, it's time for ties to come together and uh, respect the process? Yes, it's time. Now all ties come together. Uh, almost 50 million people vote for Move Forward Party and Pure Thai Party. And those parties should form the government. That's what they want. All the people have spoken. And by the way, what he said, he is the only one that appointed the senator, uh, Senate members. And, you know, today I want to quote, OK, by the way, the winning of the Move Forward Party is uh, an end game that leading to a multiverse, multiverse of madness. And one of the mad, madness is the senator. I want to quote some of the things that the senator said today in the TV in Thailand. They said, the condition is not the major divorcer from people, but from who appointed the senators. And we have different opinions to vote, but when we vote, we vote in the same direction. And one of the senators said, coup data can happen anytime. It, if bad politicians come back, they also provide a timeline. They said it may happen in three or six months. All of this, I don't believe that what the prime minister say would be true. And we all have this problem that we have to face. So you're suspicious? Yes. And at this point in time, then, uh, how uh, should uh, the... Uh, the man who lays claim uh, to uh, running the country next, uh, how does he play it? What kind of a coalition does he form? So uh, the previous uh, opposition party right now, they form and they have more than the majority. They have 310 seats. They're supposed to be the government, but they just need the vote from the senators. That ha need to have more than 375. And by the way, we as a Thai, we are pressuring to the senators that they need to listen to the voice of people. The, like what I wear today is our voice is matter. They should res respect to our voice as well as the, the uh, previous uh, governmental parties that right now soon is going going to be opposing parties, they also should respect the rule or the culture of democracy country that they should vote for the, the, the prime minister from the party that can form the majority vote in the, in the parliament. Sirit uh, Bayan, is, is the military uh, going to step in when the time is, they feel well, is also right? It may be old-fashioned because they've been living in this country in a time where the military has been extremely uh, uh, present. So I'm always, always, always skeptical and scared, honestly, about what could, what could be the move from the military. And it's always extremely possible regarding the stance of uh, Payu Chanocha. He's 69. Uh, many people around him are 675. Mm -hmm. What is important is to see the speech of this old man and the face and the, 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 the speeches of the young 42 years old Pita. You have really, it's a, it's a game changer. Something is going on. But still, I may be old-fashioned. Uh, I'm a bit uh, scared for the what's uh, what is going. Scared. To be read. A bit scared because everything's possible. I've been 20 years in Thailand, and how many coups have been uh, uh, covering? Uh, 18 coup d'état putsch uh, since 1932. So everything is is still possible. Uh, I mean, this is the the reality. Uh, we are facing millions of ties. Is it a feeling, Eugenie Merion, when the people you speak with, that uh, this is an, a, a moment of elation, but it's just an ellipse? It's only for a short while. I think now um, everything can happen, just like uh, Cyril Payan said. But uh, before the military coup, I think there are several options on the table for the establishment. Uh, one uh, way to deal with the opposition is to try to neutralize it. So first of all, um, prevent the the uh, opposition for 
from forming a government, uh, which is still something that is on the table, and we, we will see what will happen. My guess... Um, is that it would be difficult for the Move Forward Party to form a government in the end. Um, and then after that, um, there is uh, the option of lawfare, which has been experimented in Thailand uh, very harshly since 1997. Since the time the first constitutional court was created in Thailand, it has dissolved every, uh, almost every r ruling political party, and it has dismissed almost every elected prime minister. So this was the fate of the Thaksin's party three times already. It was the fate of uh, Taksin, Yinglak, and the other government, uh, um, pro-Taksin governments since then. And remember, in 2020, after the 2019 election, when Move Forward did uh, win, um, came third in the election, but only with 80 seats, only 80, compare that with 150 now, they were dissolved by the Constitutional Court. Yeah, they were called the Future Forward at the time. Future Forward Party. Yes, so it was dissolved and the members of the um, committee, executive committee, were banned from politics for 10 years. And some of them were also prosecuted for criminal um, action, uh, uh, for, for criminal sanction before the criminal court for their action. So we do have a lot of options on the table, and there is electoral fraud, violation of the election campaign rules, all sorts of rules that can be used uh, by the court to neutralize or dismiss or dissolve the uh, political part, the opposition political party. David Cameron. I'm perhaps a little bit more optimistic because, I mean, coups occur when they get the, the nod uh, one way or the other, at least, a tacit approval from, from the, the palace, from the monarchy. So the so. palace really has that much sway? Uh, those who originally know this far, far better than myself, but yes, I think they do have that kind of sway. And the difference is that the link today, uh, the link between the military and the new king is not the same as, as it was under his father. And, and secondly, the divisions within the military itself, and also the fact that, um, you know, the, the Rama the Tenth, General Longkorn, doesn't have the respect of the population. We now, you know, from what I can gather, people no longer stand up in cinemas when the national anthem is played the way that they re religiously did previously. So it may be, you know, in the new king's interest that... Um, there is this new government formed that aspires to the wishes that meets the aspirations of, of, of his people, given his high level of unpopularity. But, um, uh, you know, he is, uh, what he actually thinks politically is, is, uh, is somewhat difficult to decipher. And we have not heard yet from the king. Yeah, no signal has been sent. Um, so either to the general public or even perhaps even within the establishment, there is uh, uncertainty as to what the king uh, wants to uh, see unfold now. These were the first elections since 2020 when the uh, anti-royalist youth took to the streets to protest uh, on the campaign trail. Uh, the Move Forward Party's leader was alone, basically, in calling out the cost of the monarchy and calling out what's called Article 112, which uh, imposes stiff sentences on those who dare criticize the king. I think it's fair to say that it's the sentiment of the era that has changed. Uh, and the job or the duty of member of parliament is to speak on the behalf of people, is to pass progressive laws, is to make sure that we support the uh, duty of the government. And that was my past duty. Now I'm the government. Now his coalition partners, Fu Tai, have been quick to go all in on uh, joining forces, urging other parties uh, to sign up and follow uh, Move uh, Forward's uh, lead. Here you see the uh, headline uh, talking there uh, about uh, with uh, Sreta Tyson, who uh, was there uh, pick to be a, a prime minister, but that was before the poll. Uh, however, reforming the monarchy's status, scrapping Article 112, well, that's still a step too far for the party of the Shinawats. Like, for example, the, the, the cancellation of, of 112, we will not move, you know, because that's probably one of the few issues. Shini Pimplapas, your reaction listening to uh, Sreta there? 
I'm sorry. Can you can, can you your, your reaction again? listening to Sreta saying we don't want to touch Article 112? You know that 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 a piece of legislation that uh, imposes stiff jail sentences for those who criticize the monarchy. So um, actually, the the Puerto Party they they don't touch, but they also say that they allow the the discussion of. Uh, changing the 112 article in the parliament. And what the Move Forward Party want to do is not is not to abolish the 112, but it to change the law in 112. For example, right now, everyone can sue you with the 112, and you can be up to jail up to 15 years, for example. And right now, one of the girl who who is just 15 years is still in detention because of article 112 15 years old girl in the detention because of 112 so what the, the move forward party want to do is not extreme at all it's just to make the article 112 just be like a emergency law just like the other constitutional democratic countries just like Denmark for example it's not anything extreme but make them into normal like what Thailand called themselves as a constitutional more uh, constitutional democracy uh, what are the chances, Cyril Payen, of a reform of Article 112 happening? But we're just okay. we're touching to the taboo, and uh, which is amazing is uh, in the, the first speech when uh, after the elections, Pita uh, moved on by saying again, we will we will go uh, to these borders of uh, which is which is a breaking point in the society in the Thai society. But it's also true, as you were saying, that a lot of things change in the, in this country regard, regarding the taboo of the monarchy. Uh, there is less uh, respect, uh, I mean, which is uh, seen in the streets with the, the behavior of the people, and not only in the provinces, not only in the bastions of, uh, of Taksin, uh, Shinawat. So it's a time of, uh, of change. But uh, if you want to go a bit too quick, it could be uh, damageable too. So we, We've just talked about how difficult it's going to be to, to get a wide enough coalition to uh, overcome the objections of, uh, uh, of the Senate. Reforming Article 112, is it a deal breaker? It's something which is a key. It's extremely important because uh, it's a pivotal. But it's also maybe very much expected by the millions of people who did vote for uh, for move forward. So uh, we'll see. And, and Putai was a little bit ambiguous about this. They talked about we talk about the interpretation of the law while not mm. changing the law. So there's a bit of you know. Uh, Why is it that they're that that's their language? Is it because they've been cowed by? So many years. Well, of you know, uh, Taksin Srinivasan himself was always accused of being a kind of closet Republican that he wanted to abolish the monarchy. So Putai, after the the overthrow of his uh, of his uh, uh, sister Yunluk, um, you know, backtracked rather on this question, uh, you know, and tried to show that they were really quite pro pro more much more strongly monarchical. But I th so I think that that's the issue. It has to do with you know, the, the patriarch of the dynasty rather than, uh, you know, ideology within the party itself. Um, I also th I think the important thing to understand is this election has a revolutionary aspect to it. It's, it's you know, the people who voted for uh, uh, for move forward. It, it's an expression of the rejection of a patriarchal society. Uh, you can see in those demonstrations in, in 2020 the importance of the LGBT community. Um, it, it's, it's really something, you know, quite, quite profound that reflects in a vote uh, an underlying, you know, social evolution, which is really quite profound. And for what you described, can you form then a coalition, again, with uh, uh, rural uh, voters? Perhaps you just need. I, 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 well, certainly, the, the you know the, the populist elements on both sides are complementary from Putai, which appeals more to the rural population, and also the third party um, that's talked about uh, in the in the coalition. Putai, the kingmaker. So um, you know there could be you know there would be sort of populist policies for the urban population and for the rural population that can be quite complementary. So I think th that is feasible. It's getting to that 376, which is a real obstacle. And it's also a question, of, will there be senators, you know, who, you know, are, are about to retire or very old, who may think, well, I want to go out, you know, having helped restore. That, that, is, that is possible. But um, maybe, again, I'm being rather naive. 
Well, uh, several things here. Uh, first, what we call populist is uh, to be questioned. And Taksin has been labeled a populist because he implemented pro-poor policies, uh, which very much resemble what we call the welfare state. But it's still, it was still um, conditional on certain, uh, on certain levels. But what Move Forward is proposing is more of a, a welfare state modeled on the European uh, system. And this is what is being called populist. So it's a question of how you label, uh, how you discredit a move or a certain policy platforms by calling them populist, whereas uh, that could be called welfare state or progressive in uh, northern mm. countries, in Europe, or even in France. So I think first we have to be very careful about that media language that has been used uh, and, frankly speaking, quite mis misused uh, in the past when talking about Priatai. Now going back to the question about the 112, well, if you look at Priatai, there are two things, two constraints that have made Priatai into um, this, uh, that have forced them into that ambiguous position about 112. One was their electorate under King Bumipun. A part of the red shirts were very royalist, so they would not uh, be inclined to reform the Les Majesty law. That's one thing. And then the other thing is the institutional constraint. As I said before, we're in a tutelary democracy, so the military, the palace, still have veto power over the civilian government, and they allow civilian governments to govern until they cross the red line. And 112 was the red line. So that's why Puyatai, which was in Pali, which was a government, which is a government party and was in government, did not cross that line in the past. But going back to the electorate, now the um, Puyatai supporters do not really believe in the current king. So I think the readiness mm. in the electorate, even... They, the they don't believe in him, but how much power does he still wield? Yeah, so that's on the institutional uh, constraint that I just mentioned before. And this is still very uh, important. Um, and so there is still this veto power that is um, being in the end's that is in the hands of the king and of the military. Well, one expect the king would want to make an effort to uh, try, and, try and acquire a little bit more popularity, but uh, that would be a rational kind of decision to support this transition. But uh, one can't necessarily expect that there would be a, a rational decision made uh, in the palace. Well, it's probably rational. It's just we don't know which rationality <laughs> yeah. it is. Because that was the big... Uh, question when uh, back in 2016 uh, Cyril Payen was uh, uh, this new king who's a playboy uh, uh, what's it going to be like? What's your language Francois if you want to go to Thailand but uh, <laughs> um, well no we are it's a lot of uh, uncertainty and uh, this was back uh, in 2016 yeah, how, yes, yes. how have those questions been answered? The thing is also uh, talking about what, what is in the mind of this uh, king is extremely difficult to, it's very uh, uh, opaque, it's difficult to, to, to know what he thinks even about his own popularity. Does he really care? It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of questions regarding the, uh, uh, the, the profile of, uh, of, the, of the new king. Uh, his, um, his popularity is decaying, absolutely, uh, but he's capable of many things and he still has uh, much power. I mean, uh, people ca could, uh, could follow. But uh, maybe he's not uh, also making any, any statements because maybe he's not in the country. Uh, I'm not very sure about this, but uh, this is also uh, a, a, an issue. Uh, but there are many questions about this, uh, this new king. Shini Pim, Pim Lapas, you, you told us earlier that uh, uh, what you espouse is uh, simply for that Article 112 uh, to be downgraded and that uh, uh, slander or libel be uh, reduced to, to, uh, to, to a more reasonable uh, level of punishment. Um, how many of your friends and, uh, are themselves well, Republicans and anti-monarchy. You are about my friends? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know that number, but I can tell you the opposite numbers. The numbers of hyper-loyalists in Thailand. One of the parties that run in, the, in this election, they want to increase the punishment in 112. And that party, do you know how many people vote for them? It's only 26,000 people of 70 million of people or whatever million of people vote for that party. So I think the number is speaking itself what Thailand wants and what Thailand don't want. 
doesn't want. So I think the election has been spoken by the result. So if you ask about my friends, I cannot tell you the number, but I can tell you that 14 million people vote for a uh, move forward party that has this 112 changing in their policy. David Cameron, when we look now as how neighbors of Thailand are, are, are watching all of this, is it with uh, glee, dismay? What, what's the view on what's going on inside of Thailand? Well, certainly in, in Myanmar that modeled itself on the Thai you know, model of coups uh, to overthrow democracy, um, they must be looking with a degree of apprehension uh, the military in, in Thailand, the, the, the democratic f forces in this civil war that's occurring probably are looking at it much more favorably. Um, certainly in Cambodia, Hun Sen, who's now grooming his son to uh, become the next prime minister and has just banned the main opposition party, the Candlelight Party, um, may be looking again at this and, and suggesting, well, either I was right to do what I've done, that is, you know, ban the opposition so you rig the election from the, even before it occurs, or that, um, you know, th that maybe there is something, a, a wave of democratization or demands for democracy in Southeast Asia uh, that will also you know, hit uh, other countries in the region. Because we sit here in Paris in a climate-controlled studio, uh, and we look at uh, the Far East and always through the prism uh, of well, which side are they on, particularly with right now uh, the war in Ukraine? Of uh, uh, Which model uh, do countries want? Is it the model uh, uh, that's more like China's or is it the model that's more like the one here in, in the West? When you look at Thailand, do th those kinds of binary sort of views of the world apply? Well, first, that's very sad that we are um, now forced into that conversation uh, of uh, having to put the country into two boxes, either the Chinese model or the American model. And uh, that's very sad, but that's a, a fact that uh, also in Thailand, the military has tried to play into that, um, into that dichotomy by portraying the opposition as uh, pro-American, paid by the Americans, uh, supported by the U.S. embassy, agents of, the, of uh, external uh, Western forces. And at the same time, it's true that the Thai military um, has very strong ties to the Chinese Communist Party. And also the royal, royal family in Thailand has strong ties to the Chinese uh, Communist Party. And also the elite business in Thailand is mainly composed of Sino Thais, who um, for many of them also have strong links to the Chinese Communist Party of Thailand. So it's true that you do have that um, way of looking at how uh, domestic politics unfold in Thailand, that is uh, somewhat eloquent. But I think in the case of um, the young voter voters, they closely align with the Western model while still being critical of uh, Western democracy and American mm. imperialism. So I think this is not that, uh, that simple, the question Re you're asking. And remember the younger generation, they're inspired by the umbrella the movement in, in Hong Kong, the, you know, the, what we call the Milk Tea Alliance, uh, you know, went from Hong Kong and they were actually feeding each other with recipes of how you conduct demonstrations between Bangkok. But we saw activists pop up in Hong Kong from Thailand. No, they didn't necessarily pack, pack, uh, turn up, but they, on Instagram or right. whatever, mm -hmm. they, they learn from and they, the manuals of how you conduct a demonstration, the symbols are very similar in, in Bangkok, Hong Kong, and also in Mandalay and in Yangon, in, in Myanmar, at the peaceful stage uh, after the coup. And it's true that there is some form of authoritarian learning between Cambodia, Myanmar, Thailand, in how to dissolve opposition parties using now uh, judicial decisions instead of uh, administrative decisions like they did in the past, and also using the courts, using the law language in order mm. to neutralize the opposition. Uh, for instance, the state of emergency and um, but this is this is the language of activist and in, insurgent. Here you have uh, Pizza coming forward and saying, "I'm the next prime minister," so it won't be the same tactics, will it? Uh, what What do you mean by it's the language of the activist? Well, the the, the activist who's always on the aware, aware that they you know the party could be banned, uh, with what you just described, mm -hmm. and now uh, you have a man saying, "I'm here to be the next prime minister." 
Well, what can he say? Well, he has to. He has to try. They have to try, and uh, I. I and, and they can be allowed to govern for some time as well. Shani Pimlapas, uh, those pro-democracy uh, demonstrations took place in 2020. Uh, it's 2023. Of course, in between, we had COVID. Uh, what's changed in Thailand? You know, some of the demonstrators, they are right now elected um, MP in Move Forward Party. One of them is my friend, Ais Rachanok. She's right now elected from Bangkok district to be the, the next MP from Move Forward Party. So I would say that some of the movement on the street is now also with the Move, Move Forward Party. And I'm sure if the senator do not respect people's vote, they will march to the street once again. So it's by Yeah. So, uh, pro most probably, like uh, in 2020, like in many, many uh, years of, uh, of demonstrations, but uh, remains to be seen what will be the reactions uh, from the, the opposite side. So, as you said, uh, Eugenie uh, Tipa was uh, very right to say, to declare himself, I'll be the, the next prime minister. Uh, but again, I'm very skeptical and a bit scared about what could, could happen. But um, this vote shows that the, this country deserves to have this move forward movement, deserves to engage into uh, democracy. Uh, but the establishment, uh, the military, is still very much in the, into the, the politics, and uh, it has uh, it has grown as an infection, as I said previously. So it's um, it's not gone away for I mean like, like this, but just we won't turn the patch, I guess, in Thailand in a few uh, with a vote and a few uh, and in in a few weeks. David Cameron, politics and business interests uh, often go together. Uh, how has Thai Thailand's economy changed I in the last years? Well, Thailand is, is positioning itself to be the hub for automobile man manufacturing, especially now with uh, electric vehicles. But now it finds itself in very strong competition with Vietnam. Uh, so the, the Thai economy is, uh, I mean, it's, it's turning over reasonably well, but um, you know, there are other neighboring countries who are now becoming more competitive with, uh, with Thailand, like Vietnam and, and, and also Indonesia uh, in a number of sectors. So um, what the Move Forward Party is talking about is, is questions of monopolies, uh, questions of these large corporations and favoring smaller businesses. Uh, so to that extent, their interests, you know, do coincide with some of the interests of, of the rural population in terms of, uh, of uh, sort of limiting the power of, of the powerful, so to speak. Eugenie Meriot, the, the, the next move, we're waiting for the palace, is what you said. Well, th there should be a signal coming at some point, also for the senators to know what to do, and uh, also perhaps for... Uh, the military in general. In 2019, uh, the king came out very strongly in condemning the move by the uh, party allied with Taksin to um, get the uh, princess, his sister, uh, to be a prime ministerial candidate. He came out, made a statement, and then uh, the party was dissolved. Um, it's the same that happened when the uh, at the time, the predecessor of, the, of Taksin's party was dissolved. It came after a signal sent by the king mm. uh, doing a speech. And in 2019, just before the election, the king came, came out and said, well, you have to vote for good people. And then the, the election result came out. It was the military first party of Thailand. Uh, so th there has been this, th it, this kind of signals, even by the present king. But now we've seen nothing. Radio silence. Shini Pim Pimlapas, how do you interpret that silence? Oh, I, I also don't know if it's a silence, like Eugenie said, but I want to say one thing. This winning of the Move Forward Party is not probably a landslide, but it is a skyfall. So now sky is falling. I don't know what <laughs> come next. <laughs> Are you, uh, Cyril Payen said he was a little bit scared for the future. Are you scared? Uh, I'm concerned, but I and many times we're not scared. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Shini Pimlapas, for being with us uh, from Copenhagen. I want to thank as well Cyril Payen, Eugenie Merriot, David Camru. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.